my conclusion from my study, and it's over 50 years of studying um, black images in film, Hollywood has never had an interest in black folk. As I told you before, it's always been whenever filmmakers, Hollywood producers, whenever they've dealt with the theme of blacks, it's always been reactionary, never proactionary. The antecedents of black exploitation was Sidney Poitier's slap, Raymond St. Jacques, If He Hollers, and Jim Brown. Sidney's films fell out of favor with the new black militancy. And the other thing that you have to contextualize in the zeitgeist of the time was that when they brought on Raymond St. Jacques and Jim Brown, you had the riots. The fact of the matter, however, is that law and order have broken down in Detroit, Michigan. Pillage, looting, murder, and arson have nothing to do with civil rights. And Johnson appointed a Kerner Commission to study the cause of the riots. On July 29th, President Johnson established a special advisory commission on civil disorders to delve deeply into the social soul of the nation. It will be led by Illinois Governor Otto Kerner and New York City Mayor John V. Lindsay. So in that study, the famous lines, is, it came as a conclusion. We had America going into two directions, one black, one white, two societies. And w the other thing that was pointed out is that what caused, one of the causes of the riots was that blacks never saw themselves in the media as other than brutes, um, criminals, negative, plus in film, I'm one of the guys say, hey, where are our black heroes? Introducing two cops only a mother could love. Meet Coffin Ed Johnson and Grave Digger Jones, two of New York's finest. Cotton Comes to Harlem was first released. Ozzie Davis at the helm, MGM. Who the stars? Raymond St. Jock. And Godfrey Cambridge. Why those two? Remember, there was always an attempt to make Raymond St. Jock a star. So he had some background, but Godfrey Cambridge, I mean, you know, two tough cops, because Raymond was off the hook. His fierceness was there. The thing is, MGM's taking a chance with it. So they don't want, once again, if we're gonna have black men up there, right away the politics of representation as well, we're gonna have to tone these boys down. Godfrey Cambridge, you're not gonna compare him to Jim Brown. Jim Brown was radical, he was, he was on. Cotton Comes to Harlem relatively was a, a, a big success. Wow, how do we follow this up? My man comes out and he makes Sweet Back, badass song. Nobody went to see that film. Personally, I'm going to say it piece of crap, as far as I'm concerned, okay? Take issue with me. Piece of crap, I didn't put me to sleep. Just like I used to be. Work your black behind to the gums. Work your black behind to the gums. Work your black behind to the gums. And you're supposed to time us till he done. Everything's about timing. What helped get that going was the support of the Black Panthers. What's the name gave it a big write up? Go see this film, they wanted to, Tying. Huey Newton. Huey Newton, yeah, revolutionary this and all of that. What had a lot of brothers going to see it. There was a whole lot of stuff going on in there, you know? Beg. No. You too proud to beg? I hope you wouldn't take them off if I did. <laughs> you know every goddamn thing, don't you? Well, first things first. It was rated X by an all-white jury. <laughs> What did he introduce in that film? Black and white sex, black men and black women making love, mm -hmm. a black man striking a white man because he kills a cop, all mm -hmm. right? 
But we can also call that film N-I-G-G-E-R on the run. Because mm -hmm. all through the movie, that's what he's doing, running. He follows Sweet back up with something that was more accepted mainstream. The film that really got things going was what? Cher. Cats ain't gonna be here, he should be here. Open it up. Shaft's his name. Shaft's his game. And the other thing, you know, you talk about the phallic thing, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, Shaft, but they had a big fight. Um, Gordon Parks had a big fight over. He wanted um, Richard Roundtree, who was a model. You go through some of the old ebonies, you see Richard Roundtree modeling. I don't know if a lot of people wear this. They fought over him wearing a mustache because usually what happens is the trope for heroes, you don't give them a mustache. The only one who helped get, get away with that was Clark Gable. But, you know, if, if we're talking about sh what stereotypes do or what accepted images, they're shorthand. So if, if you have a blonde, she's dumb. You have someone with glasses and a pipe, he's smart. This is short. So you put the mustache, that's the villain. They gave. Finally, they consent. Okay, we'll let him have a mustache. But that was a phony mustache that Roundtree was wearing. Are you mm -hmm. aware of that? I never knew that. Okay, and Roundtree was black and beautiful, and he looked good in that leather. He had it together. I'm looking for a nigga named John Shaft. Just found him. Wow. Now I'm a black man. I dug it, but now the, our sisters had something to look at also. And it's a black man, a dark man, being cool, suave, and kicking butt. Shaft, hotter than bond, cooler than bullet. Rated R, if you want to see Shaft, ask your mama. Big success. Saved MGM, took it out of bankruptcy. And, 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 and what's the name? You know, he only got about $12,000 for that role. Richard Roundtree. Richard Roundtree. So and that opened that, the door. That, that was it. And then the term black exploitation, the reaction to Superfly. But the scene, me and my brother in the theater, and that love scene with Sheila, and Ron, and the way they filmed it. And we said, oh my goodness, no you didn't. And Sheila, I, I got to speak to her, and she told me Tree, she called Round, Richard Roundtree, she called him Tree. She said, Tree got me the part because they wanted an actress with bigger boobs. Since she didn't have what they wanted, they focused on something else on her anatomy. And that scene was like, I still feel they cut it, because I, I remember seeing it, and she's still embarrassed by it today, but I said, oh, this is, now we're seeing black women that had us lusting after, loving, and, and, and being attracted to, because one of the other things I failed to mention was growing up. Not only did I want to be a white man, I also wanted to make love to Virginia Mayo, Rhonda Fleming, these names you have to look up, but. Brainwashed you. Yes, brother. See, so. now I'm looking at Pam Greer, Black Chocolate, Gloria Hendry. Now we talking. This is something for us. You're going to work for me until I tell you to quit. You don't own me, pig, and no motherfucker tells me when I can split. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? I'm talking to you, you redneck faggot. When we saw Ron O'Neill in the beginning, he's learning Kung mm -hmm. Fu. Well, you know, that's setting up something. So he's getting in the fight with the cops. Mm -hmm. And then they say, hold it there. Mm -hmm. And the guy who pulls the gun on him, mm -hmm. you know who that is? I'm not, I don't know. That's Sig Shaw. Okay. The producer. Yes. Uh, yeah. You move a muscle and I'll kill you. Kill me, Ridden. Kill me like you kill Scatter. You are one dead pig. What are you talking about? You know? Mm -hmm. We got you. And he says, what? 
because you seen him in the scene with some white boys. He said, you going to do what? <laughs> you ain't going to do nothing to me. In case you thinking I'm trying to pull some of that old time nigga shit on you, Captain, I think you ought to know something. I had the very best killers there are, white killers, white ones, baby. So you better take good care of me. Nothing, nothing better happen to one hair on my gorgeous head. Can you dig it? Then when he walks off, and we can't lose sight of the other thing that was popular with black exploitation, the music. Okay? And he walks up to Curtis Me. Oh, that was it. These films, they help quell those riots. Because remember, we had the Coroner Commission studying why we had all these riots. These films helped to calm that down. I called it rioting in the movie theaters because all of our anger and our angst, we were able to vent in seeing people who look like us kick the white man's behind. And what was the subtitle of black exploitation? Get whitey. For every drop of black blood spilled, a white man pays. He had a plan to stick it to the man. The man, see, we were beating the man. And so I call it rioting in the movie theater because this was rioting without destroying anything. It was a catharsis for us. My name is Charles Woods and you're watching Real Black. Now, I'm a baby boomer. When I was growing up, I never saw blacks kissing in the movies. And when I started studying film, I learned why. I work with Pam Greer in a movie called Friday Foster. And I played, dun 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 da a pimp. I kind of had this part down. I don't know if I can do it today, but back then in the day, I could play you a pimp.